You are listening to ChartingWealth.com's weekly review and forecast for the week beginning Monday, the 11th of July, 2016. What do we see going on? Well, we always start with IYY, which is the iShares Dow Jones U.S. Total Market Index Fund. It is an exchange-traded fund that tracks the whole market, all the stocks in the market. What are they doing? Well, there had been prior to this week's close on the 8th of July, the prior three weeks had been down candles. Now, they had showed a lot of indecision, particularly the week ending the 24th of June, but they had all been down red candles. They did have wicks on top and wicks on the bottom, which meant up and down movement throughout the course of the week, but they were negative. And then, boom, we saw a bounce off the red signal line on the MACD. It looked like it was going to cross over after the week ended on the 24th of June. But what we saw for the week ending on the 1st of July was a bounce off that red signal line and the market continued to move up. And actually we have a green up candle at the end of the week, a green open box up candle with a good size wick on top. The market has turned around on our weekly charts. It is still in a confirmed up move. And the derivative oscillator went from negative for the week ending the 24th of June and the 1st of July to positive. The derivative oscillator is now in a positive green territory. So again, we shall continue to watch. The week ended on our Hink and Ashi candlesticks, actually a little bit lower than it did as far as the candlesticks go on the 10th of June. But again, not too far below that. And if we look at what happened throughout the course of the week on the daily chart, this week, of course, began on the 5th of July, a shortened week after the 4th of July holiday on Monday. And we had seen the market really move down on the daily charts. That was on the 27th and then again down on the 20. I'm sorry, the 24th and then the 27th. That was the day following the Brexit on Friday, the 24th, and then when the markets opened again Monday, the 27th of June. And then the market started a real climb on the 28th, 29th, and the 30th, and then again on the 1st of July. Then when we came back from the holiday, the market opened lower on our Hink and Ashi candlesticks. If you don't, again, know what these average pace type of candlesticks are that we use, I encourage you, listen to the training at chartingwealth.com. Go to the training section, Hink and Ashi candlesticks. It will help you out a lot. They are really a great way to visually see price movement in the charts, in the market. We saw the market open with a red spinning top candle, lots of indecision. The derivative oscillator had moved over into the positive on the 1st, and then we saw throughout the course of the week the market building until that crescendo on Friday where it was up 1.56% for the day. Derivative oscillators continued to heat up. MACD crossed over on the 1st and continued to move up. So again, total market in a confirmed up move on the weekly chart just when it looked like it was getting ready to roll over again. I encourage you to read the Stock Traders Almanac. There are great sections in there and also several of the books by Yale and uh, Hirsch and his son on the, the, the presidential year cycles that you see. It seems that the presidential races in the United States have such an incredible impact on the stock market. We are currently in, of course, an election year where the market almost always goes up. It's very interesting. Once a new president wins, typically the markets crash for two years after that. Could be that the new president's putting in new policies. The markets love consistency. Maybe it has something to do with that. But regardless, do buy the Stock Traders Almanac. Read it. You will find that Jeff Hirsch and his father, Yale, have incredible advice to give to you. I use it like my Stock Traders Almanac, which is exactly what it is, and you need it. Even though it's halfway through the year, you will get much, much out of it. Buy it every year before the new year starts. So we see a green up candle ending the week, and we see the weekly candle, a, a big green up candle. So that is confirmed. Now, 
From that chart, we're going to go to the S&P 500. It was up for the day 1.49%. Again, the two-day chart had already crossed over going down on the weekly chart back on the 24th of June. It then crossed back over for the week ending the 8th of July. Had three green, had three red down candles on the prior weeks, the week ending the 17th of June, the 24th of June, and the 1st of July, and then boom, the market rolled right over again up. Derivative oscillators still barely negative, but the MACD crossed over the signal line and it's confirmed up move on the S&P 500. Now, if we look at the daily chart, looks similar to what we saw on the total market. Some indecision on Monday when the, I'm sorry, Tuesday when the markets reopened. And then we saw, that was the fifth, and we saw the markets just continue to climb, still well above the two-day trend line, lots of up movement. All right, we're going to go back to the weekly chart, and we're going to take a look at what the Qs did. The Qs was up 1.55%. That, again, is the NASDAQ 100. It had also crossed over going down back on the 24th. It, too, turned around and moved up again. So we we really hiccuped there and crossed back over. You just can't seem to keep this market down. Green open box, up moving candle for the week. Keep that in mind. Remember, it's that big chart that really the markets tend to always go back to until that rolls over. The market's going to always tend to move in the direction of the biggest chart. And the biggest we look at is the weekly. Daily chart had rotated over on the 1st of July, moving up. The week open, just like with the other two indexes we looked at, uh, some indecision, a little bit down, and then started flying up, ending high on Friday. So we have all three of our indexes are confirmed up moves on the weekly chart, two of them reversals as to where they had been previously. So that's where we are. Now, let's lastly, before we get to the news that moved the markets and what might be moving the market over the course of the next week, let's look at gold. What is gold doing? Gold is moving in the same direction as our market indexes. Now, typically gold moves inverse. It's a safe haven when things are bad, and it's a place people don't always put their money when things are good. But now we have gold moving in the same direction as the markets. Gold was up on Friday. 0.60%. Gold crossed over going up on the weekly chart back on the 24th of June. Derivative oscillator flipped over a week later. Gold continued to make strong up moves for, let's see, one, two, three, four, five weeks. Five weeks gold has made strong up moves. If we look at the daily chart, we can see starting Tuesday the 5th what gold did. It had already crossed over going up on the daily chart back on the 24th. Derivative oscillator flipped over to move in the same direction as the MACD on the 28th, and the market has continued to move up. A little bit of a hiccup in gold on Thursday, a little bit of indecision, but then it started moving up again on Friday. The derivative oscillator did start losing a bit of energy, and the MACD and the signal line moved a little bit closer together, but still pretty far apart. All the movements still well above the two-day trend line, but you would think if the markets keep moving up that gold is going to move over and go in an inverse direction as it usually does. But I do wonder, what does that tell us? If gold is continuing to go up, maybe the rest of the world is not as confident as the United States markets might be in just what is going on. Okay, let's jump into the news and talk about what actually occurred over the course of this past week. Well, the big thing that knocked the markets really up on Friday were that U.S. payrolls bounced back. Non-farm payrolls were stronger than expected, although I think a lot of people expected there to be a hiccup from that last super bad report. Uh, they were actually more than expected at uh, 287,000 new jobs. Uh, that was, I'm sorry, not new jobs, but stronger than expected at 287,000 jobs. Unemployment rises to 4.9 percent. U.S. payrolls also revised from $11,000 to $38,000. Now we see problems over in the U.K. The pound ends up falling to a 31-year low. 
We see property freezes on redemptions in the UK. Remember, that was the place where everybody could go throw money into property and watch it just keep going up ad infinitum. Made no sense. And you know what? What goes up does come back down, doesn't it? And we see the Federal Open Market Committee minutes show that the Fed is still on its wait-and-see attitude with the rake heights. Let's talk a little bit more about U.S. payrolls rebounding, because remember we had that super weak month of May, and the markets did expect those weak May payroll, that is, again, non-farm payroll figures to be revised higher. And when the June data was released on Friday, we saw that May payrolls were revised even lower from 11,000 to 38,000. Uh, June payrolls were stronger than expected, rising 287,000. That's over 100,000 more than was expected. That's what really caused that bump up on Friday. The economy averaged 149,000 new jobs per month in May and June. And of course, what is that figure going to mean to the Federal Open Market Committee? It might give them some confidence to actually raise rates later this year. What will that do to the market? Well, when the free money goes out, you can expect this inflated market to not be so inflated. And again, what do we learn from the Stock Traders Almanac? That these election years are times when the market is inflated. And once the new president comes in, that's why you need to listen to our training on inverse ETFs, how to make money when markets crash. Please continue to practice what we talk about here. It is going to be so valuable to you in the coming years when things do start falling apart or right now when the markets just keep flying upwards, okay? Pay attention. Do your practice trades. Listen to us every day. We also have some great news that I have finished the market worksheet that you can fill out every day as you listen along, follow with the charts, and as you practice learning to read these things, you can go back and see how much better you get. And then you can start making up your own mind as to what you're going to do, spending your own money, and hopefully making lots of money in the market. Remember, we're just an education firm. We're not a stock calling service. What else do we have going on in the world? Well, the UK prime minister race we see narrowing. We see that from those Fed open market committee meeting minutes. They're in no hurry to do anything just yet. We see weak about Italian banking sector creating all sorts of jitters. And then what do we have going on over the course of the new week? Because that's where we were. What's What are we going to see happen as we jump into this new week? Well, nothing's really happening much on Monday or Tuesday. We do see some things happening on Wednesday. And this is what you need to pay attention to. Most of all, the U.S. Federal Reserve is going to release its beige book on Wednesday. That could have some impact on the market. Pay attention, listen out, be aware on, thir on Wednesday that the Federal Beige Book is going to be put out from the Federal Reserve. That can always, anything the Federal Reserve does seems to have an inordinate amount of impact on our market. A lot of people say it shouldn't be that way, but hey, we pay attention to how things are, not how we want them to be. We want to figure out where the market's going and make money when it goes in that direction. Also on Wednesday, Bank of Canada is going to be holding a rate-setting meeting. We're going to see on Thursday, there's going to be the Bank of England Monetary Policy Committee. They're going to meet to set rates. That's going to be an interesting one with all that's going on after the Brexit. And then we're going to see on Friday a couple of things. The U.S. is going to release its retail sales data, its consumer price index. And China is going to release its gross domestic product and retail sales. That's also on Friday of next week, the 15th. So what do you need to pay attention to in particular? What we hear on the Beige Book from the Federal Reserve on Wednesday. Pay particular attention to that. Again, continue to realize where all of these indexes are. Everything is moving up. It is an election year. Everything may continue to move up. Again, we're in the summer doldrums, okay? Sell in May and go away. Trade again another day. That's in the fall. The fall winter trading zone is several weeks off. When it gets here, we may see even more interesting things happen. So again, remember in the summertime, volatility is expected because there's not nearly as much volume in the market. A lot of the big money is out. So again, 
and a lot of the big experienced traders taking vacation, doing a little relaxing. Things are turned over to other staff. So continue to watch these charts. Pay attention. Use this as a time to really practice with your virtual trading. Start figuring this stuff out. And remember, we don't lead the market. The market is what leads us. We want to let these charts tell us what to do. We don't tell the charts what to do. You try to do that, you are going to get hammered. We, again, appreciate you so much listening to us. If you have questions, problems, concerns, let us hear from you at chartingwealth.com. Go there, sign up for our newsletter. We will send you our videos every day for our market reviews, plus this weekly review and forecast. If you really appreciate what we do and want to help us out, go to iTunes, sign up for our podcast, either the weekly or the daily. If you sign up for the daily, you'll get the weekly in audio format. Also, if you really want to help us out, give us a five-star rating. Say something nice about us. Also, subscribe to us on YouTube. When we hit 1,000 subscribers, although we have many thousand listen a week, 1,000 hardcore subscribers will then be able, under YouTube's rules, to give you some proprietary broadcasts. And those of you who subscribe will benefit from that. Also, look for the market worksheet. We're going to have actually some links to that so you can start getting that. I'm going to do a video here over the next week on exactly how to use it, but I bet you can figure it out. It's pretty self-explanatory and we'll provide that to you absolutely for free. Thanks again so much. God bless. If you're listening to this early on the weekend, hope you have a great weekend. If you're listening to it late Sunday night or early Monday morning. Hope you had a great weekend. God bless from chartingwealth.com.